Okay, we have uh, this is this was a rebuilt engine, rebuilt the top end, the larger displacement. It's running a little bit lean on the stock jet, so I've got this additional carb that we've stepped up from 115 main to 120 and a 42.5 secondary to a 45 and we're gonna just hot swap it right on so let's take a look at how to also this video will be used for a uh, rebuild video how to but the first thing we're gonna take the seat off of course we're gonna get this air box out and before we yank on it we need to do the Phillips heads right there There's two spots. They're just going to be uh, actually. There's going to be three spots. Loosen it up a whole bunch until she starts spinning around. And then here's the other one. These are just the tubes for the intakes. And then we're going to use this opportunity as well to inspect the air filter. All right, air box comes right on out. Lose this, just not lose this. And then we need to take this top off. I've already undid some of these uh, two hard wrench bolts. So if you don't have those already, and don't, if you undo those, don't, don't put them back on. Because it is way too annoying to reach. So right now mine's only uh, my fuel tank's only held on by this bolt and this bolt. We need a 10 millimeter, and let's get that fuel tank out of there. ahead and disassemble all this. The washer for reference is on the bottom. Bolt goes through the lug on the top. Okay, fuel tank can come out. We have to push it around this cable here. Okay, I pulled the side cover off, and I'm going to have to disconnect my fuel line, so I need a flathead. I actually have a tool made for this called a fuel line puller. It's a little bit too small for this line. Let's try it anyways. I need one just a little bit smaller diameter. All right, pretty sure I broke it. Oh, I can drain my car up here. Okay, let's get this off. I've already got the two front bolts off. I've got the two rear bolts off. I have to push this cable around this back part as I'm lifting. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. No, I've got to set the camera down. Okay, fuel tank has been removed. Push this up. Now I'm going to do these two uh, inner bolts. The ones that are attached to the carb I'll keep on. They'll come off as one assembly. Let's free up a little bit more space by pulling this out. It just disconnects from this line right here. And this, let's pull out from here. Okay, we need a get a 14 millimeter. I already pulled them out where are they? We'll use a 14 millimeter first because we want to get rid of the choke and we don't want that to be loose. The choke comes along here and 
dips into this right here. So 14, let's get it cracked. You can do it by hand. And you're going to let it hang. Okay, next let's do this Phillips head on the top. Got three Phillips screws for the top plate. Top plate comes out, comes with the slide. So you're gonna bring it over here, and you're going to let it hang. Now we need to do the side plate. It is six Phillips spots. No, let's do it afterwards because it's too hard to reach in there. So let's switch to the 12 millimeter. Disconnect this top line right here because it goes into the manifold. Now, the only thing we have is this secondary governor cable. We'll do that outside. As we pull, we need to make sure we're not binding on all these wires. Uh oh, I have an electrical wire that's in the way. So I'm going to have to take off my bottom valve. Oh, and I can do that from up here. Ugh, come on, girl. Okay, coming on up. I got to set the camera. Okay, I've got the car out. Got it here on the side. We're going to do this side plate. It's going to be uh, six Phillips screws. Okay, side plate's off. Set that somewhere safe. And we're going to do one of these tricks where we flip it up. Here's the way out. So you can't bend it there, but if you flip it up the slack you need just spin the wire I don't know and this thing will fly this little brass piece a really shiny piece so you support it as you pull it out and then take it off and set it aside See? okay got it off pull it off set this aside okay now we're just gonna unthread this Disconnected carb, flip it upside down, get rid of any residual gas. Set that aside. I mean, this carb is alright, but it's just not jetted right for the bigger engine and it has a busted drain valve, which is what I did with this right here. And I actually like this mod so much, I might keep it and add it to all my vehicles instead of reaching down here with that Phillips draining that bowl which will come out of this drain screw uh, this is like the enricher tube and it goes up to 
there. One of those two. That tapped in a T valve. Brought it down to this lower point. Did an on off valve. So when I turn the fuel valve off on the engine, I want to run it dry so it didn't get all gummed up if I don't use it. And then I crack this. Since it's the lowest point of the bowl, all the fuel drains out. And it's just an on off switch versus having to tool up. Okay, we're done with that. This one has just been rebuilt. I got a new drain screw in there. I got the bigger jets. I went from a 42.5 secondary to a 45. And from a 115 main to a 120. Now we're going to throw this on in. And of course, installation is exactly the opposite of removal. Oh, I need to put my uh, tube in. Okay, we're going to do a quick rebuild from this carburetor. Got everything out. We left the mechanical slides in, of course. And I'm going to kind of show you piece by piece. First thing we've done is new o rings on the emulsifier guide. And I used that one, R05. I don't know what that. Anywho. So we're going to put a little bit of oil on there, we're going to tap that in, we're going to get the emulsifier going. This is directional, that hole will line up with a hole right there. It's really hard to do while holding a cell phone. And then we have some security bit screws we're going to use to tighten on down. Here's a shot of the security bit. Sorry for the shaky cam. I'm going to tighten that down. Okay. Let's do the emulsifier tube. And it is directional. And I think we're going to put a little bit of oil on, on that as well so it'll go in. It goes from the top down. So we're going to have to put half our hands in here and half our hands in here and push it in. And this little edge lip will match and reference this little edge lip and it'll hook into there. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of scotch bright, and soften up some of the, uh, there's some rough edges on it. Okay, got her nice and shined up. Let's hit with some oil. And this is a difficult balancing act. I'm gonna align it, spin it, and then I'll tap it in, so I can't show you this. Okay, I've got it in sitting like this. I'm gonna find something that I can gently tap it in with. Okay, we've got the emulsifier in. Now we're going to grab our washer and our main jet. And it is a 115 size. Washer goes down first. And then our main jet. And then snug it. And then of course always use a clean flathead of the right appropriate size. So that one that's too small will kind of strip in. Okay, let's do our, I don't know what that's called, secondary jet. And then we'll assemble our float. So this one, if we look through it, we should see here it's nice and clean. And it will go into this one right here. And we're going to use a small enough screwdriver that it fits the same width. Snug that down. Okay, now let's do our to symbol our float. I'll put a little bit of oil on it. Okay, float goes right here. And that's it. Now we actually have like a lockdown pin plate, so let's put that on. 
smooth side goes down, rough goes up. And I'm going to have to find that screw. It's somewhere underneath there. Okay, pin it down. Make sure you got your washer on underneath there. Okay, now let's do our float and needle. I'm going to hook our needle on the tab. And then drop it in. And we're going to do a measurement. Oh, I just lost it. And we'll, we'll, we'll measure it here in a second. Oh my gosh. There it goes. And then our push pin. Okay, let's do our idle jet. Uh oh, which requires three things. Let me go see if I've got a new one. We need a washer, the jet, and then a rubber O-ring. I just found that I have one of these, which is easier to adjust. You can see it's a wrong orientation. The spring's going to be behind them all, but let's put this one in. Okay, this is the orientation you want. Spring, tiny metal washer, then the rubber O-ring. And it's going to go into this one right here. And I'm going to do it upside down where I'm threading it up but I gotta put the camera down okay the stock position for this in the manual is one full turnout so we go to we gently see there so I'm looking at the three so we're gonna go all the way around there's a half and we're gonna bring that three all the way back right there one full turnout then we have a baffle plate it just kind of hangs on there, so good luck. And then now let's reassemble our bowl. Now we're going to adjust the float, then assemble the bowl. Okay, to adjust the float, I never remember the size. Here it is in the carburetor. Float height, 11.4 to 13.4. So let's see. It doesn't really say where to measure it from, but if we set this here, let's see we've got 10, 11, 12, 13, I'm almost rocking 14. And once, so I need to kind of bring it in a little bit. It might be flooding. Which means I have to freaking knock out the pin. Oh, no, I don't. I just got to bend this tab. And the way I'm going to do it very carefully is... So I I need mine to... Which way Which way does it go? Mine is too sunken in, so it needs to pop out. So I need to... This needs to... No, I set it backwards. My little tab needs to come up. So I'm going to gently kind of pry in here and bend it up a little bit off camera. Okay, I think I've got it. I'm gonna come back down here. And now to the top, I am at 12 and a half. 11, 12 and a half, which is in spec, which is 11.4 to 13 point. 11.4 to 13.4. So I'm at 12 and a half. So good. Which means like it almost wants to be kind of level. All right, now we can reassemble. Put this back in. We did not have to take that back out to do that. Okay, now let's work on our float bowl because I have a jet in there that's out. So I did this jet goes into this cavity right here. And I've cleaned it up real good so you can see through it. Let's install that. And I have a new drain port screw, but I don't know where it is right now, so we're going to put do it at the very end. So we need a rubber gasket. This is the one that I pulled out of there. 
it does have its own orientation. I got a new kit coming in the mail, but for demonstrations, we're going to use the old equipment just in case some of y'all don't have it. And if it doesn't quite fit right, if you put it in some hot water, it will loosen up and push into the voids a little bit easier. And when putting it on, you have one big challenge is this overflow port it has to go into that groove right there on the right. So let's try that now. Don't knock off our baffle plate. Got it. Okay, so when you put the screws in, kind of do them all equally and bring it down at the same time. That way it doesn't squeeze out that uh, gasket. Okay, we're back. So next we need to assemble this side plate. I think it's called an air shutoff valve. I don't understand. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, we've got this. It's clean. It's in good shape. It's almost. They. Oh, I found a company that actually remakes these. They're on eBay, but they're like forty-four dollars. For forty-four dollars, you can buy the Chinese carb and just get a lot of extra parts for it. But I. Uh, cleaned up a little bit we're going to do a little dab of oil all the way around so that the rubber doesn't go in and dry and it's going to go in first then we're going to have the spring and where's the spring at then we're going to have the spring go on here and then all this will close up and there's our orientation uh, right there and of course it's going to use these three screws and this is an access to a C-clip that will push out the uh, throttle pin. So we don't need to mess with that. This screw right here will go into this. It does something. It channels through. But I need to uh, pause the camera. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here. And we're going to reassemble that and make sure it, it moves nice and free. And it does. It drops right on in there with no obstructions. Good. Okay, we got that reassembled. So now let's do this screw. Make sure our gasket is good, and mine is. And put that in. And we're getting down to pretty much just putting it back on the carb. Let's take a look here. Okay, we need another. We need a new drain screw. I'll look to see if I got that. Let's take a look. This cover plate goes on very last because you got to hook up the uh, thing. The choke will go on when it's on the motorcycle. The top will go on when it's on the motorcycle. We need to put a new O-ring in there, which we've got. That was it, guys. Everything else. Well, let's actually let's do um, let's do our drain screw real quick. Well, I found this piece that needs to go on. So this is the uh, idle adjust remote. And you want to make sure it's nice and lube, not rusty. It'll have a few parts to it. We're going to, it's going to spring. There's an O-ring right in there. And then there's a washer. And then it will thread into the bottom of... On the flapper doodle side, right in here. And we're going to rest it just on the bottom once we get it in there. And then we'll adjust while we are on the machine. I need two hands to screw this in. Okay, I've got it in there. It's pushed up against there. And then this piece just kind of flips over and under, guides itself onto that, and gets pinned in with this screw. And this screw is always a very difficult screw to get out, so maybe put some anti-seize or a little bit of oil on there. And then this will be done. Okay, that's it. I'm still going to order a new valve. I freed up some of these other ones that had stuck valves. In fact, look at what happens when these get stuck. That's the condition. This is a Chinese one. 
this is an OEM Yamaha and let me show you what it looks like when one of them breaks off and then you try and drill it out and it's still gummed up so that's that's gonna be a challenge I don't know how I'm gonna do that one so always try and cycle those so that was it we've done we did the, uh, the float adjust we did the cleaning we did the oh this is all the reassemble video so now it just needs to be put back on some of the identification spots for you for references here's where your choke is going to screw into you'll have six mounting screws here with the gasket and then your black side cover and you're going to loop in your throttle cable right in there this one is not used only use this one these two are air vents. One has a one-way valve on it. This is your fuel inlet. This is your fuel drain slash overflow. This is your idle speed adjust. This go. This is called the enricher enricher tube, and it comes up to oh goodness, which one does it go to? Yeah, well, well, I'll figure that one out later. I'm not looking at it. it goes up to like this one. And I think the intake manifold one goes up to this one. But don't quote me on that. Here's your air stop valve, whatever that means. And of course, we're going to have a gasket, a new gasket here. And then our intake rubber boot with lock washers. Here's the aftermarket adjust that's just lower down. So you can actually adjust it while it's on the machine. The other one is flush in there. You cannot reach it. This side looks like the drain port valve, but it's it's sealed off. This screw, I can't forget that one. It goes, it blows out air through somewhere up here on the top. So all we do is we clean up our slide that's still attached to the four wheeler and drop it in here with a new a new gasket on the top. The there is for like nine dollars on. Amazon or eBay these aftermarket kits Now I don't know how good some of the parts are in here, but they it's the cheapest way to find a gasket the OEM rubber gasket the little cylind Cylindrical one. It's like $24. You can get this whole kit for nine and it'll have uh, all the parts I tried to use one of these before to, uh, But this needle and seat was a different size and dimensions, which means you'll throw it off your float setting, so I didn't use it, but this has great gaskets. Look, it's even got the rubber gasket right there, the big one for this. It was nine dollars. I'm gonna use the OEM jets, but it's just nice to see to get all the all the rub rubber pieces for nine dollars. I think it was eBay. Okay, so that's it. That's the reassembling of a Yamaha Terra.